Hey, you guys, Yulia here. So today I wanted to show you one of the projects that I've been working on this fall. So basically one of our nearby towns received a grant to promote uh, the use of native plants to local residents. And uh, the environmental commission of the town reached out to me to design a garden with um, native plants exclusively. Now, you guys know I am not a native purist. I use other plants in my designs as well, but I use a lot of natives. I love them. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I'm also one of the few designers in my area that use native plants heavily and also um, knows them really well and how they behave. So the space that I was asked to design was actually really tricky. It was right next to a parking lot uh, and there were some existing trees there which were red maples which is a nice uh, tree but they were not planted correctly plus they started to develop some uh, health issues like cankers and we had to remove three of them. There were also some shrubs um, most of them were invasive like the spirea so we removed those as well the design of the space was also tricky because it had three different light conditions so right next to the building there is a lot of shade almost full shade uh, kind of set back about 15 feet there was uh, part shade and right next to the sidewalk there is full sun so i had to create three different plant palettes uh, for those different conditions. And the design planting idea was to use plant groupings kind of like brush strokes for each individual area and um, use plants in groupings of 12 to 15. The soil at the site was horrible. And a lot of times when you plant uh, something in urban areas or heavily populated suburban areas, the soil has a lot of construction debris and also concrete and concrete makes soil um, alkaline which a lot of plants don't like so we actually had to amend the soil somewhat but not heavily because these are again native plants they don't need a lot of amendment otherwise they can get um, kind of overgrown and develop too much foliage and actually flop but what we did we added about two to three inches of compost and then um, about five inches of mulch. So the plants we ordered plugs because we needed about thousand plants for that area. Uh, we did have about 30 or 40 plants as one gallon containers um, just to have some color uh, because I didn't want the public to see itty bitty plugs and um, not be particularly impressed with this uh, native garden. The thing about plugs that I actually mentioned in a couple of previous videos is that you have to plant them about four to six weeks before the uh, first frost because they need to be rooted before the real hard frost sets in. If they don't root, they can heave out of the ground. They kind of don't have anything to hold on to. So if you do get plugs, make sure that you plant them way ahead of your um, first frost. We had a lot of different plants because I was going for a lot of plant diversity. And by the way, if you're uh, curious to see the plant list, I will put it in the description down below. You are welcome to download it. Um, if you are deciding to convert part of your garden into native garden or maybe incorporate more native plants in your garden, you're um, welcome to just go off my list but uh, most of the plugs looked really really healthy except uh, there were few like the switchgrass which is a warm season grass and i am admittedly taking a risk of planting that grass in the fall because it is um, definitely more favorable to plant it in the spring it uh, establishes a lot easier but you know crossing my fingers that it will be okay my experience with the switchgrass with one gallon containers established with no problem in the fall. However, with plugs, um, it's a little trickier. We did order these plugs from wholesalers because it was a pretty large order, but there are a couple of places uh, with plugs that are available to regular homeowners like Prairie Nursery, Prairie Moon Nursery and Chief Mountain. And again, I will put all of the sources in the description down below. Next step was to lay out the plugs and it took me and the person who was helping me that day five hours to lay out a thousand plugs. And um, the way I plant the plugs is about eight inches apart to one foot, depending on the species, but 
closer is always better in native gardens and gardens in general because I'd rather come in later and edit the garden and take some plants out rather than dealing with weeds that can start growing in between the spaces if you space the plants further apart. And planting the plants closer together, they just live um, better and develop better that way as a community. And the next step was planting. And notice that we amended the soil and added mulch before we planted. Because when I plant plugs or smaller perennials, I prefer to amend and add mulch before I plant. Planting thousand plugs and then mulching the area sounds like an absolute nightmare to me. So mulching beforehand definitely is easier. Now the amazing thing is that the plants were planted by volunteers. Uh, so we put out a call to local garden clubs and a local native plant society and they sent uh, volunteers who knew what they were doing, uh, they knew how to plant plants, and it was just such an amazing community project. But um, what we're dealing with right now in northern New Jersey is a lot of drought. We haven't had a rain for almost a month. So we use a technique that is called puddling in. Um, it's when you dig a hole for the plant and you actually use water to fill in the hole and then you moisten the root ball of the plant as well and then you plant it in the hole and I think it helped tremendously with the survival of the plants that we put in. A couple of days ago I went to check on the project and I pulled some of the plugs out to see if they were rooting in and they were healthy and they had beautiful white roots coming out and they were developing nicely so I think that technique uh, of puddling in in a drought conditions really helped to keep them healthy. As for the planting itself, it took about five to six hours for the 10 of us to plant thousand plants. And I gotta tell you, we were really tired in the end, but it was incredibly fulfilling um, and also kind of a bonding experience. You um, meet these people for the very first time, but then at the end of planting, you feel like you created this space that will develop and grow for years to come together it's kind of magical but the next step was maintenance and this is what a lot of people underestimate everybody gets really excited about the design part of the project and the installation but then the maintenance is often forgotten now because we are in the drought conditions here in northern new jersey we are watering the garden every two to three days for about an hour and a half with sprinklers uh, but the important thing is actually to look down the soil to see how far the moisture goes because a lot of times you could see that the garden is watered but down where the roots are it's actually really dry so what I usually do is dig down about four to five inches that's how deep the plugs are and see if the soil is moist and in our case it actually works out perfectly um, but you also have to keep in mind that you don't overwater your plants as well because you are uh, spending way too much water and it's not beneficial for plants but in our case we kind of found that this schedule of two to three days is perfect and the plugs are establishing nicely. Now I know this garden doesn't look impressive right now but I am sure that the next season it will look absolutely beautiful and as for the maintenance um, I think we're going to stick with pretty much the same schedule if there is a drought condition we will water it we will probably need to weed it at least a couple of times next year because uh, when the plants are still small, there's room in between the plants where the weeds can come in and start growing. But as the plants start to fill in, they will create a lot of competition and the plants will pretty much take care of themselves. Uh, but I will definitely keep you updated on the status of this garden. And um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick update on this project um, and thank you so much you guys for watching today's video i hope you learned something new and i will see you in the next one